Um, and next we have John Christensen, uh, Director of the Tax Justice Institute. We were just talking about Greece and last weekend I was in Jersey, my home island, uh, with a Greek documentary team. Um, one of the reasons why Greece, so, Greece has been so heavily in debt for such a long time is because their money doesn't sit in Greek banks, it sits offshore. Much of it's sitting here in London, much of it's sitting in my home island in Jersey, or in the British Virgin Islands, or in the Cayman Islands. The reason why Greece has had to rely so heavily on debt for the last first 40 years is because all of their wealthy companies, all of their wealthy people, have sh shifted their money offshore to places like London and don't pay tax. So who pays tax in Greece? It's the teachers, it's the nurses, it's the ordinary people, a bit like here in Britain. The same applies in Britain, of course, our powerful country, companies don't pay any tax. Our rich people don't pay any tax or pay very little tax. Um, the assumption that if you pay bankers uh, huge sums of money and then tax them back doesn't hold water because most of them actually get paid their bonuses through offshore structures. We're actually sitting in an offshore tax haven at the moment. The city of London is actually quite offshore. Politically, it's run by the Corporation of London. The Corporation of London is like no other democracy anywhere in the world. There are only 7,000 people who are physical electors living within the square mile where we are at the moment. The vast majority of the electors of the City of London Corporation are companies. This is a democracy where companies have votes. The more people they employ, the more votes they have. The end result is you have a democracy called the City of London Corporation, which is run by business, by capital, on behalf of capital. This is fundamentally anti-democratic. It gets worse. They have their own police force, they have their own standing army. When the Queen wants to visit London, the City of London, she has to stop at the boundaries and come under the protection of the City of London Corporation. So one of the things we need to do is to reclaim the city. And there is actually a group here called Reclaim the City, and they're, they're organizing uh, uh, actions later in, in November around reclaiming democracy in the City of London. But if we are to reclaim democracy, we're going to have to tackle what I think is one of the fundamental issues, one of the fundamental problems we all face. And that is that since the 1950s, the banks have by and large been operating offshore. And I want to explain what I mean by offshore. Thank you. In 1955, an extraordinary decision was taken over there in the Bank of England. The decision was to ignore a bond issued by Midland Bank just around the corner. Midland Bank had their headquarters there just around the corner, 150 metres of where, from where I'm standing. The bond was a dollar bond. The significance of this was at that time, all financial activities were strongly controlled under the Bretton Woods Agreement. Capital exchange, capital controls were in place and central banks were responsible for regulating banking activities. Over there, for some reason, perhaps over a cup of tea, they said, well, we're not going to control this particular bond issue. Because it's in dollars. We don't mind about dollar issues. They turned, suddenly, they deregulated a whole area of banking activity and opened up what we now call the Euro-dollar markets. So, these euro dollar markets have became global. By the mid 1960s, they were trading in hundreds of billions. Now they trade in trillions every single day. A totally unregulated and largely untaxed market. Why stop here, thought the banks as they began to develop this market within London. Why don't we create our own little escape holes where we can live beyond democratic control, beyond regulation, we can do whatever we want. These are the places we all know and love as tax havens. Places like Jersey, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Luxembourg, Switzerland. And you'll be familiar with them because almost every single day of the week, when you listen to the Today, the Today program on Radio 4, who listens to Today program? John Humphreys and his crowd talking about why 
we uh, must make so many concessions to business. Every morning at about 6.20, they'll have someone from the city talking about the markets. That person will say, we must deregulate London, because if we don't deregulate London, all this talent from the city of London will leave and go to Switzerland and go to Luxembourg and we'll miss them and our economy will suffer. And so successive governments, whether it's Labour or Liberal Democrat or Conservative, say, oh, well, we, we can't have that. We must make them concessions. We must cut their taxes. We must deregulate whatever they do to keep the bankers here because we have no other economy left because the bankers here are so good they destroyed the rest of our manufacturing base <laughs> now the trouble with the offshore economy it is systemic it runs right the way through the world it's become massive the vast majority of world trade the vast majority of world investment cross-border investment the vast majority of wealth is now held in tax havens or goes through tax havens. We're about to finalize some research into how much money actually is held. Private money is held offshore in tax havens. Um, and the figures which are being worked up at the moment in New York are somewhere between 22 to 25 trillion US dollars of private wealth held offshore tax evading a trillion is one million million so we're talking here about 22 to 25 million million of dollars including greek money italian money british money american money african money held offshore and that perhaps explains to you why we pay more tax why the tax charge is being shifted away from capital onto us through higher vat cuts in exemptions, <coughs> cuts in services, because the rich are paying less, corporations are paying less, we're paying more. Now, the, the sad truth is the vast majority of the tax havens are either British, American or European. The impact of these places on developing countries is catastrophic. Greece is just one example. My friends at Christian Aid have produced very good case studies of how the vast majority of Zambia's wealth from copper mining is shifted out of Zambia and turns up in Switzerland. It's turned Switzerland apparently into the biggest copper trading country in the world. How did that happen? It happened because of a colossal systemic failure. Yeah, we, we do have a colossal systemic failure at a global level. We have to completely reform the International Monetary Fund, completely reform the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the World Bank, and others. But I think it begins here in Britain, because I spend a lot of my time talking with the IMF, observing them, observing the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and the UN, and the one country which spends all of its efforts blocking reform and has been doing this since the 1950s is Britain and I'm thoroughly ashamed of Britain's role in blocking international progress and I want to give you an example of why I think we have become one of the most corrupt countries in the world I came back to England as the riots were building up in August. And at that time, some very interesting discussions were underway. Germany had just started to make a deal with the Swiss government, whereby they were, go were going to allow their tax evaders who'd been using Switzerland to get away scot-free. They weren't going to investigate. They weren't going to prosecute. They weren't going to put these criminals into prison. And they are criminals, and many of them are from the very highest elite of German society. And as I came back to Britain at the time of the riots, I heard that the British government were doing exactly the same thing. We have evidence of over 6,000 of Britain's highest elites who have been using Swiss banks 
to evade tax. One of those banks, by the way, is a British bank, HSBC, organized criminal organization, which has been involved through its Geneva Bank in enabling people to evade taxes on a systemic basis across the world for donkey's years. Their chief executive of that branch, Stephen Green, Reverend Stephen Green, Lord Stephen, Lord Reverend Stephen Green, <laughs> is a senior advisor to the current government. He was chief executive of this criminal organization that was enabling British people at the very highest level to evade tens of millions, possibly billions of pounds every year. So at the time when the Prime Minister was saying, we will investigate, we will prosecute, and we will punish the looters in London. He was doing a deal with the Swiss banks to do exactly the precise opposite with Britain's wealthy elites. We will not investigate, we will not prosecute, we will not criminalize these people. We will do a deal to let them get away with this. These people are the most privileged, the wealthiest of our society. They are criminal, they belong in jail, but we're gonna let them off. But worse than that, this deal is designed to undermine international attempts to tackle tax evasion. It is Britain's attempt to protect its own tax haven economy, which is much bigger than the Swiss economy. I think one of the reasons we've got to take to the streets is because Britain has become deeply corrupted by our banks, many of which are criminal organizations. We've got to tackle the tax haven economy. We've got to democratize the City of London Corporation. We've got to democratize the Bank of England. And we've got to overcome this criminal instinct within our bankers. Thank you very much. And good luck to you.